Hello everyone and welcome back to another pronunciation teaching video for topic 8 about winter sports. And so in today's video, we're gonna do exactly the same thing as we did in the last pronunciation teaching video for topic 7. And so let's get started. Okay, for the first line. That's yours, Maddie. Can you read it, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so excited for winter. Okay. So the first thing that stands out to me is so. All right. And can you explain a little bit more about why you stress the word so here? Because it's an adverb and I'm getting ready to express my feeling. So I'm so excited. I'm excited for winter. So for the most part, you have two words here you would stress. The first one is so and the second one is excited, excited right? Mm -hmm. And this one as well. So yeah. back to so real quick, the way I stressed it is by making the sound just a little bit longer and raising the intonation. Oh, I'm so excited or I'm so happy. Typically people would do the same exact thing when they are expressing any other feelings, stretching so a little bit longer and raising their voice. Exactly. So I think this situation is pretty much similar to any of the sentences that have the word so and too, right? Or extremely or really. Mm -hmm. Because those are the adverbs that are going to make whatever you are interested in or whatever you are excited about much more intense. Exactly, yeah. And I think that's about it for this line. Okay, and for the rest here, you are having that following intonation, right? Going back down for winter. For exactly. Winter. I'm so excited for winter. Okay, so moving on to my next line. Really? Even with the Canadian freezing temperatures? Really, of course, I stress this one. Like we said above, right? So if your line has the word so mm -hmm. is an adverb, then my line has the word really. Really is actually one of the shortest ways to ask and at the same time expressing your surprise, I think. Really, mm -hmm. right? It's more of like a rhetorical question, like exactly. really? Yeah. So you're asking, but you don't expect for any result or answer. Mm -hmm. And the primary use of it is to express how surprised you are. Exactly, yeah. Even with the Canadian freezing temperatures? I mean, the word temperatures here. You stressed it because it's coming at the end of a question. Right. Temperatures? And I noticed that I also stressed the word Canadian. Canadian freezing temperatures? So basically, I have that rising intonation from the word the to the end of the sentence. And of course, the reason, the main reason of this is because it's a question. So I would like to stress it. But more importantly, that I stress the word Canadian for a reason because the temperatures can be a little bit normal in mm -hmm. other countries. But when it is Canadian freezing temperatures, it might be perceived as something that's really unique and is mainly about the cold. Exactly, yeah, they're, you're classifying it by region, country, exactly. however you want to describe it. So like Canadian temperatures maybe compared to Vietnamese temperatures. Exactly, right? And the other thing that I want to mention is we used Canadian instead of Canada. I think that's a really important thing to mention. So. Even though you're classifying the temperatures by region and country, you're still going to use the same word form as you would with describing people. So Vietnamese, Canadian, um, American. And just because you said that, so it really reminds me of another way. So we can also say Canada's freezing temperatures. But I mean, there's a slight difference between the two, right? Because when you say Canada's freezing temperatures, so those are just the freezing temperatures I and mean, cold temperatures of Canada in general. Mm -hmm. But if you say Canadian freezing temperatures, so those are the temperatures that um, Canada is well known for. Exactly. Similar to how you maybe think about a person's personality. Oh, he's nice. So right. that's a similar classification in this case, Canadian freezing temperatures. It is a characteristic of right. the country. Yeah, exactly. The word characteristic is a, the key word here. Um, and guys, you guys can also use the possessive form here, right? To make sure that freezing temperatures are possessed by Canada by saying Canada's freezing temperatures. 
But in this case, when you use the word Canadian freezing temperatures, it is more about the characteristic, about the weather that is something to reckon with in Canada. All right, let's move on to your line. Well, yeah, winter actually has a lot to offer, even with the excruciating cold. Just think about all the winter sports we get to do. Have you tried any of them? Okay, so of course, well, yeah, was stressed here, cause I'm telling, I'm expressing that I'm excited. Yeah. And then winner actually, actually, yeah. was also stressed. So aside from the excruciating cold and all the negative things that you can think about winter, by saying actually, I'm offering, of course, a new perspective similar to how we talked about in topic seven. So that is why actually is being stressed here, rising intonation and just stretching it a little bit longer. And the reason that I think you stress well and yeah here mm -hmm. was because you answered the question that I asked you before right here. Even with the Canadian freezing temperatures, oh yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. But I'm also excited because I'm also getting ready to explain the rest. So basically the whole line follows the same pattern of answering the question but at the same time after that you are providing with some more reasons or details as to why I was excited for winter. Exactly. Okay, has a lot to offer. All right, so we've gone over this connecting a lot of times. We'll do it again. A lot to offer. A lot of offer. Right, so we have here has a lot of offer. Has a lot of offer, right? Another way you can say it is if you're uncomfortable changing ta, then you can say has a lot to offer. Has a lot to offer. Right. But one thing to notice here that we have two T's that are standing next to each other right here. Mm -hmm. And so by shortening it down to just one T is going to save you more time and it's going to be a lot easier for you to pronounce them. Has a lot to offer or has a lot to offer. Both ways are correct. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next part of it. Even with the excruciating cold. I believe I stressed excruciating here as well. Excruciating, yep. Mm, because describing how the cold feels, you're still enjoying everything that winter has. Right. That's a very important point because you want to make sure that it's a little bit different and it brings in the news mm -hmm. perspective. Um, it's just exactly like you find a silver lining in a very tough situation, right? So it's really bad, but the way that I see it, that we still have more fun, but by stressing like how bad it is, so the next thing that I'm about to say is gonna be more amazing. Exactly, yeah. So having contrasting um, descriptors in the same sentence. Right. Just think about all the winter sports. Just think about all the winter sports. I think you stress the word, I mean the whole phrase, the winter sports. Right? Yeah, because that's the contrasting thing from excruciating to winter sports because winter sports are exciting. Exactly. It's part of it, right? It's mm -hmm. part of the cold and the weather and the winter in Canada. By raising the intonation here and expressing that winter sports is on the other side of the spectrum compared to excruciating cold. But you can't have winter sports without winter, of course. Right. One thing I do want to go back to is before winter sports. Think about all the connecting. How about think about all? Yeah, think about all. Right. I'm not sure if I did it in this one or changed no. it. No, you actually made um, a stop right here, mm -hmm. right? Because like all the winter sports. I probably didn't link it while I was reading it because all the winter sports, right. there's many different types of winter sports. So exactly. that might be why there's that pause. One thing for sure that you linked it here, think about, think mm -hmm. about. Mm. A very good point. We get to do. Have you tried any of them? So since this is the question, them is stressed. Any of them? Any of them? You can connect it to. Mm -hmm. Any of them. So a different way that you can say this is any of them. Um. So some people, not everybody, and sometimes I even do it, is shorten them to um or em. em. Right. Um or em are two different ways we pronounce them. So 
One explanation to make sure that you guys understand this one easily is that the TH sound here is being kept silent, right? So of them. And so if we leave out the TH sound here, then the word of has the v sound at the end. And so you link the v to the m sound uh, of the word them, then you have of them. But mm -hmm. what do you think about, can you go out and get them? Go get them. Mm -hmm. um, um. Right? Go get them. And mm -hmm. so we have tackle them. Right? And then many of them. And then go get them. So a lot of situations where you can leave out a TH sound and let's just pretend like the TH sound is not there. Right? Mm -hmm. Just don't get into a habit of doing it all of the time. Right. But just keep it in mind, especially for your listening, that this happens quite often in English, especially when it comes with the V or some other sounds in English. Exactly. And just one thing to keep in mind here that when you guys are paying attention to some of these connecting points and you'll, you understand why native speakers are linking them in a very specific way, but also you are going to be able to recognize some of the sounds and not mistaken them for some new words that you haven't learned before. So if I didn't know this connecting sound right here, then I would probably think that it was a totally brand new word that I haven't learned before, Maddie. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we talked about go get them. And I also noticed that if the phrase, I mean the sentence is go get him, go get him. Mm -hmm. Then you would also say the same thing, right? The same way. How do you say it? Go get him, go get him. And then that's go get him. And then the other one, go get them, go get him. Okay, go get him and go get him. <laughs> they sound very similar and so this is where kind of grammar knowledge and also the context of the conversation comes into play. It's going to take a lot of practice to get the difference between the sounds, of course. So, im is for him and then m and um are for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you also linked it here. So, try Danny. Mm -hmm. Have you tried any of them? Tried any? Danny? Yeah. Have you tried any of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be quite honest with you, I wouldn't have linked it here if I was the one who spoke this line or this sentence, right? <laughs> have you tried any of them? So I basically tend to turn the ED part here into a stop D sound. So I, I'd say, have you tried any of them? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to my line. It depends. Does sledding count as a winter sport? All right, good. I think it depends. It depends. This is basically an answer to your question. Mm -hmm. You just asked me right here. Have you tried any of them? It depends. Right? It depends. Mm -hmm. That's why the word depends has to be stressed. And then I asked her back a question. Does sledding count as a winter sport? And I know that some of my connecting points here are not familiar to you because you're a native speaker and I'm not, right? And I know that you would probably say count as. Yeah, I would count as uh, a. Mm -hmm. Count as a. Does letting count as a winner sport? Can you just say the whole um, sentence for me, please, Maddie? Sure. Does letting count as a winner sport? Do you guys hear it? Does letting count as a winner sport? So we already talked about this one in the previous pronunciation teaching video. So we're not gonna touch upon this one anymore. So you guys keep in mind that the T sound here can be left out. And so the word count now only has the N sound at the end. So that's why you say count as, count as a, count as a winner sport. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does letting count as a winner sport? Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, that's not my way. <laughs> <laughs> My way would be, does letting count as a winner sport? But anyway, the word winner. Mm -hmm. If we talk about count as, then winner follows exactly the same rule. Don't get winner mixed up with winner, like the person won the race or the person is the winner of the competition. Right. So again, keeping in mind context, the context of the conversation is about winter sports. Right. So of course, I'm not going to say, oh, winner, he won the competition. And now this one is clear. Let's move on to your next line. Um, not quite, but I'll let it slide. 
Mm, just a sound. Right. Not too important. And then not quite, not quite. Slowing this part down to stress it because I don't necessarily count sledding as a winter sport. And the reason that you have that rising intonation for the word not, I mean, you have a higher pitch tone for the word not is because you are answering my question. Does mm -hmm. sledding count as a winter sport? Right? So not quite. This kind of response is telling you one that I don't count sledding as a winter sport, but I don't want to step on your toes by saying flat out no. It mm. does not. All right, and then the next one, let it, let it. That T changes to a D. We've already gone over this rule. So just keep in mind, it's the connecting let it slide. Right, so but I'll let it slide. Using the phrase let it slide, I'm telling you that even though I don't count sledding as a winter sport, I'm letting that go for this conversation. Because I asked you the question, have you tried any of them? Right. And your response was sledding, and that was the only thing that you had. And so by saying I'll let it slide, I'm saying I'll let it go and yeah. count it off as a winter sport for this conversation. Exactly. That's another way to cushion the blow. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, let's move on to my next line. What winter sports are you most excited about? Of course, what winter sports? It is the subject of the whole question. That's why it has to be stressed somehow. What winter sports are you most excited about? And then I follow that um, falling intonation for the rest of the sentence. What winter sports are you most excited about? Um, I link the D sound at the end of the word excited to about. So I had excited about. Excited about. All right. Hmm. Are you most excited about? Very straightforward. That's why we are moving on to your next line, Maddie. All right. I'm mainly excited about snowboarding. I'm still at a beginner level, so I have to stay on the bunny slope. But once I get good enough, I want to go further up the mountain. I heard that the view up there is absolutely worth suffering the cold. Perfect. I'm mainly excited. The word mainly. You stressed mm -hmm. it, but now I'm asking you why you stressed it. Because that's the main point, mainly excited about snowboarding. So mainly is indicating that the thing I'm most excited about is coming up. Exactly. And once again, this is one of the adverbs to show mm -hmm. how and the intensity of the feeling, right? And so that's why it's stressed. The connecting and also intonation excited about Excited about snowboarding. So excited about, once again, up here I linked it. Excited mm -hmm. about. Then down here, Maddie also linked it. Excited about. It's just a connecting that we seem to favor. Exactly. <laughs> I'm still at a... At a... Mm -hmm. Right? Still at a... Still at a... So I would... I don't know if I did it for this one, but sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. We'll mm. connect the old to at. Right. Still at a... Right. So the L sound here, she linked it to at, and then the D sound, the T sound here is being turned into a D sound because it stands just right in the middle of two vowels, and then she linked it to a. Uh, so she pronounced these three words as one word. So still at a, still mm -hmm. at a beginner level. I think the next thing that was stressed is beginner level by slowing my speed down significantly, really expressing that. I'm still at the starting level of snowboarding, exactly. but I'm still excited about it. So I have to stay on the bunny slope. Slowing down for bunny slope because it's the place that I have to stay while I'm snowboarding. Yeah, and once again, something that is very important as a detail, then you would probably just take your time to say it or mm -hmm. you enunciate it a little bit. Well, yeah, because also bunny slope is connected to beginner level. Right. Anybody who does snowboarding would know exactly what it is that when you are a beginner at snowboarding then you have to stay on the bunny slope okay but once i get good enough once uh, i course. get good enough of course i i typically do link good enough good enough right and also the word enough you stressed it a little bit how how are you going to be able to go up higher on the mountain once i get good enough 
This is talking about my skill level good enough because I'm still at a beginner level. So I'm not good enough. I'm not at a higher level to go farther up the mountain yet. I want to go further up the mountain. I want to go further up the mountain. The connecting want to go. Want to go, of course. Want to go right here. How about farther up? Farther up? Farther up. Ah, uh, I don't remember in this one, but typically I would further up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one thing to keep in mind, even with Marty, um, she said further up because further is another way to say about this word but with a different spelling so further spells with a u but for this word father as you guys can see on the screen right now it spells with an a so maddie when are you going to use further and when are you going to use father i typically use them interchangeably and since i favor the word further more while reading this, my brain automatically changed it to further instead of reading it as farther. And these words are actually similar to the word father. Father and mother, right? Because the only difference here for this word compared to the word father is the R sound right here. So if you say father, you really have to enunciate the R sound. So listen to them together. Farther, father. Farther, father, farther, father. <laughs> All right, mountain. This word, we talked about it before in the last conversation. I mean, the last video for topic seven, because the way that we shorten the T's out here and we say mountain instead of mountain, right? Exactly. So we're not going to go over it one more time. So let's move on to the last bit of the line. All right. The next thing that stands out to me is I heard that, heard that. The stop D sound came into play, and then I went straight to that. Heard that. Right. So basically, you stress the word heard because it's the main verb of this sentence. Mm -hmm. I heard that. The view up there. Heard what? The view. But where? Mm -hmm. Up there. The view up there. So rising intonation for these words. View up there. The view up there. Right? Exactly, because the overlook, the view up there, is absolutely worth... Stress a little bit. Absolutely worth suffering the cold. Mm -hmm. I think I also stressed suffering. The way that you stress the word suffering here is a little bit different compared to those words above. Mm -hmm. um, suffering, you have that um, falling intonation, but you dragged it out a little bit. Because one, suffering is a bad thing. I, w right. I don't think it, you would raise your intonation. Suffering? Mm -hmm. Because then it sounds like a good thing. No. Suffering, suffering, and dropping and dragging it out because it's too cold up there. Right. Nobody wants to suffer anything, especially the cold. That's why when it comes to the word suffering, it's painful. It's a bad thing, right? But in this situation, Maddie was trying to make it as a good thing. I mean, an acceptable thing. That's why she was dragging it out to make sure that I I got a message. Mm -hmm. Suffering the cold. Let's just read the whole sentence one mm -hmm. more time, Maddie. All right. I heard that the view up there is absolutely worth suffering the cold. Right. I heard that the view up there is absolutely worth suffering the cold. So these one, two, three, four points are the most important points within this sentence the last bit of the line. All right, so if this line is clear, let's move on to my next line. All right. But how long would you guess it'll take you before being able to go higher up the mountain? But how long? Of course. Why? Because this is a question, right? This is the point. This is the point that I'm trying to ask. That's why it has to be stressed. Would you guess? You're also asking for a length of time. Right. How long would you guess? So how long and guess are the two points. The first two points that I stressed. Mm -hmm. It'll take you before. It'll take you before. Being able to. Being able to. Um, in the last conversation, I mean pronunciation teaching conversation that we have for topic 7, I already talked about dividing. Sometimes native speakers will divide their sentences into some kind of segments. And so it depends on how 
those segments contain some important points and ideas or even initiating a new idea, right? They're gonna decide to raise or have rising or falling intonation for those segments. Mm -hmm. And so within this question, I actually have how long would it, how long would you guess? This one is the first segment, right? How long would you guess? How long would you guess? Right? I have that rising intonation. And then it'll take you before. It'll take you before. <laughs> That's the second segment with a falling intonation. Being able to go higher up the mountain. Being able to go higher up the mountain. So basically, I am not sure if I raised my intonation or uh, dropped my intonation for the last bit of it. I mean, the last segment of it. But it seems to me that I maintain my intonation for the last bit of it. Being able to go higher up the mountain. You did. And of course, for the word mountain, I have that falling intonation for the word mountain. Right? So how long would you guess it'll take you before being able to go higher up the mountain? I didn't say. Go higher up the mountain. <laughs> but I do have to say you raised the first part of the intonation. Mount, mm, mountain. Mountain. Oh yeah, that's correct. Because believe it or not, it's still a question, right? And mm -hmm. so by raising part of the word mountain, it makes it um, indicated as a question. Yeah, so you had the rising intonation for the beginning part and then kind of pressed it down at the end to follow the rest of the segment. Exactly. So being able to go higher up the mountain. All right, let's move on to your next line. Go ahead, Mighty. <laughs> oh, that depends on how much my skills will improve this winter. I'm hoping by next winter I'll be able to. I'd say that my skills are currently decent, but I still have too many wipeouts. And also, I'm not that great at dealing with some of the terrifying situations that could happen higher up on the mountain. Perfect. Oh, that depends on how much skills. You really stress how much skill. How much my skill? Oh, uh, yeah, how much my skill. Right, because it's a factor that determines whether or not you are able to go higher up the mountain. Exactly. So right? how much my skills will improve. Exactly. Very subtle here. So you said my skills all. Yeah, I shortened the will to all. And I said, skills will improve. I don't know if we've gone over this in another video, but typically, not all the time, but a lot of the time, native speakers will shorten will to ul and connecting it to the word before it. Skills will. Mm. So another example, my wife will do the work. My wife will do the work. Yeah. It sounds weird when you're saying it slow, but when it's said fast, it sounds really natural. My wife will do the work. Okay, how do you say David will do the work? David will do the work. David will, David will do the work. Right. David will, David will. When you are doing this connecting, do not go slow. It's gonna right. take a little bit of practice, but it will be worth it. Very good point. I love this connecting point because basically, I personally don't have the habit of linking or, you know, like shorten the sound here for the word will and then link it right here. So I didn't say skills will improve, but I will say technically skills will improve because that's how I usually say. Just keep in mind that native speakers won't always do it. That's why I said in certain situations they will, but sometimes will is also a stress point within the sentence. So that's when we do not shorten it. So let's go back to the last example. David will do the work. Mm -hmm. If I say David will do the work, that means I'm really expressing that he has to do it. Yeah. He has no other option. Mm -hmm. But if I say David will do the work, it's more relaxed and laid back. And the person I'm also talking to, I'm telling them that they don't have to worry about the work not being done because David will do it. That sounds really awesome, Mari, because you never said that. You never stressed the word will, so I suppose that you never meant me to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. All right, now I know. Skills will improve this winner. I'm going to go back to this example. If I say how much my skills will improve this winner, I'm really laid back about the situation. I'm not too intent. 
I hope that they will improve, but if they don't, I'm okay with it.、Mm. But if I say my skills will improve this winter, and I'm really stressing will,、yeah. that means I am dead set on having my skills improve this winter. You're really going for it. You're forcing yourself to be able to have that skill before being able to do the thing you want. Exactly. Yeah. So, like I said. Sometimes people will shorten will to ul. Sometimes we don't. Just depends. Awesome. Let's move on to the next sentence here. So, I'm hoping that by the next winter, by the next winter, I'll be able to. I'll be able to. All right. So we have two sections here for this sentence. So the first one is going to be I'm hoping that by the next winter, right? And、mm-hmm. then I'll be able to. I、can't remember how I stressed it. That's how you stressed it. It was. Trust me,、uh-huh. I can still remember it very vividly.、Good. So I'm hoping that by the next winter, having that following intonation, but then、mm-hmm. all of a sudden you raise this one because I'll be able to. Oh, because I'm connecting what I said there. I'll be able to, to higher up the mountain with the previous lines that I had. Yeah, so this one is not a full sentence as、mm-hmm. it appears to a lot of people. But since based upon the context we already talked about, so I know that you will be able to go up the mountain,、mm-hmm. go higher up the mountain when your skills are improved, right? Exactly. Okay. This so- is also another great point, just to keep in mind that a lot of the times during conversation we may link back to things that we've said before. So I'm hoping that I can go higher up the mountain. I'm not saying it again because it's too long. I've already told you, right, right, that I want to go higher up the mountain. So here I'm saying, I'll be able to because we're still talking about how my skills are being able to go higher up the mountain. So just keep in mind and don't let it throw you off if you feel like it's not a complete sentence. Just keep in mind the previous things that were said throughout the conversation. All right, the next one. I'd say that my skills currently are decent, right?、Mm-hmm. Decent. Of course, the comma right here already indicates the segment. The first segment is I'd say that my skills currently are decent. Currently,、mm-hmm. currently are decent. Do you、yeah. still remember how you stressed? I I can guess a little bit currently because right now. So I stressed currently. Dropping and dragging it out are, and then decent. There's already that pause because of the comma, but decent is dropped down and stretched out.、Excellent. Currently are decent. Right. Okay. Before moving on to the next part of it, I would like to ask you if you enunciated the D sound here. So did you say it at all? Ah,、uh, I believe I stopped the D. I'd say. Okay. I'd say. Yeah. So most of the time, native speakers will stop the D sound right here, but Did they say it or do they say it? Yes, yes, they do. We've gone over the stop D sounds and T sounds in a previous video. So if you're unsure of how to stop the T and D sounds, go watch that video and then come back. Perfect. All right, the next part of it. But I. Connecting it. But I. But I. Still have. Still have. Still have. It's gonna sound a little weird here, but trust me, guys. Native speakers are really linking it here and shorten the h here of the word have, and then they'll link it. Still have, still have too many white vowels, right?、Mm-hmm. So Maddie, how do you say this one one more time? Still have. Okay, in the conversation, you didn't necessarily stress it, but I still have very distinctively. But anyway, a lot of people will say it. So just so you guys know that some people may say it, so that's how you can. Recognize the sounds so you can better understand them. Some people might say it, but then it also kind of depends on the conversation, the timing. Right. It changes from one moment to another, especially for a native speaker. I can't always say that. I always say still have, still have. Maybe sometimes I'll say still have.、Mm. Just depends on how I'm feeling. Exactly. Yeah. So if the weather has four seasons, then Native speakers are also unpredictable, <laughs> and they go for their own choices. So make sure that you understand why they do some certain things. But there are a lot of other exceptions in the way that they use or stress or even say some certain things. Exactly. Yeah. And also, 
and you link it here and also oh i want to go back a little bit to wipe outs wipe Correct. outs okay i stress this one especially by slowing down i believe from what i remember wipe outs because this is the thing that is holding me back from being able to go higher up the mountain yeah but i still have too many wipe outs of course the word two like we said above the two here is an adverb and it shows the intensity of of what she's trying to express, right? So that's why she stressed the word to here. Mm -hmm. And moving on to the next one, and also, and also, I typically connect it here, and also, and also. I'm not that, I'm not that great. Okay, I'm not that great, right? Mm -hmm. So basically the word not, right here. I'd also say that too, not that. Ah, right, 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 right. That can be seen as an adverb, so can you explain why it stands here? And what does it mean? So, that great is setting the base standard for something. So, I'm going to be using this conversation specifically. So, by saying that great, I'm indicating that there is a standard I have to meet before I can go higher up the mountain. And currently, I'm not that great but i'm getting there i'm almost to that so it's somewhere on a different level on the scale so changing let's say great to the word good i'm not that good that means i'm putting myself at a lower level and it's going to take me longer to reach the point that i can go higher up the mountain so just by changing the word it's also changing the difference on the scale of where I'm at. So I'm not that good at dealing with the situations. That means I'm probably here and I should be here. Right. So you're making some comparison or you're making yourself, you're making your level comparable to whatever point that you expect yourself to be at. Maybe a, a intermediate level. Exactly. So maybe I'm talking about my English skills. My English skills right now are decent. I'm not that great yet, but I think I can communicate with native speakers comfortably. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Right? So that, that great, that good, that excellent, that means you are comparing, you're referring whatever you're talking about to some certain point. That point can be your expectation or can be the requirement that you have to meet in order for you to do some certain thing. Yeah, or also another way, standard. Maybe an unwritten standard right? right so only like a verbal standard between multiple people that is general knowledge mm -hmm. and in this situation i already know that you said in order to be able to be higher up on the mountain you have to meet some certain level of skills mm -hmm. and so by referring to that skills you use the word that here and it's really understandable mm -hmm. but anyway the way you stress is another story that we have to talk about it's important <laughs> so that great not right? that great yeah so most of the time is exactly like any other adverbs if you want to increase the importance or the intensity of what you're trying to say you have to some kind of stress it in the right way and take the time to say it or expand the word or in the v previous conversation, we said, drop the word out a little bit. And then now we are moving on to this phrase. Great at. Great at that, that. Right. Great at dealing. Mm -hmm. Great right. at dealing. Very fast. Summer. Summer. Okay. So she'll say summer, but I'll say summer. Okay. So I'll say it your way. Some of the terrifying situations. Ooh, it sounds so nice. Some are terrifying. Oh, sorry, I missed the word the here. So, some of the terrifying situations. So, I think you stressed the word terrifying too. I did stress terrifying by dropping the intonation and dragging it out. Perfect. Terrifying situations. I think I also stressed could because I'm talking about the possibilities right. of some of the bad situations. Higher up on. Yeah, higher up on. Mm hmm. So the connecting here, and it's also said a little bit faster, higher up on the mountain. Higher up on, higher up on the mountain. When you practice with this video at home, 
try to say it slow first, right? And then when you are getting familiar with it or get comfortable with it, you can speed it up a little bit. The reason you have to go slower with it at first is because you're getting your muscles and building up that muscle memory, for example, to say this phrase similar to how a native speaker would or just to say it better. Because if you go really fast right from the start, you may be making a pronunciation mistake and then developing a bad habit. So take it slow at first, even though it might be frustrating. All right, let's move on to my line. Whoa, that sounds really intimidating to me. On a different note though, how do you get all the way to the top of a mountain like that? Right here. Whoa, that sounds really, of course, really. Mm -hmm. And that sounds really intimidating. Intimidating to me. I put intimidating in there too because you did stress intimidating. Even though I have that falling intonation. Mm -hmm. Right. I dragged it down somehow. And then the me. The me. I didn't say to me. Okay? Intimidating the me. Right. That sounds real intimidating to me. On a different note though. You really fluctuated your voice on a different note though. Right. On a different note though. Even throughout the conversation in the video, the actual conversation video, you still fluctuated your voice quite a bit for this phrase. You have to add on a. Okay. Yeah, on a different note though. Right, on a different note though, right? Mm -hmm. So though is reaching the lowest point of this rising intonation, I mean falling intonation of the whole phrase, right? But then on a different note though, I mean, this phrase somehow made me believe that I was going to initiate a new idea. That's why I wanted to pull or captivate your attention by having that fluctuation of my intonation, if that makes sense. But not only that, you're also changing the tone of the conversation because in the conversation, if you look at the last two lines I had about some of the terrifying situations that can happen higher up on the mountain, and you also had, that sounds really intimidating. So that's changing a little bit of the conversation to a negative point. Right. And so you want to maybe bring it back to a good point and also asking me more questions. And so that's why people will typically fluctuate their voice when they say on a different note though, because they're trying to change also the topic and the tone of the whole conversation, right? Mainly, yeah, the tone is the main point that I was trying to get to, yeah. Right. I use the word though here because I wanted to be a little bit more standout and make this whole point. I mean the point that I am about to make right here, right? More important than how how terrifying those situations on higher up the mountain are. Yeah, exactly. Right? How do you get all the way? All the way. How do you get all the way? God. That's the first chunk of this sentence. Mm -hmm. How do you get all the way? So, I stress the word all the way. The word all here is very important. To the top of the mountain like that. And then mm -hmm. for the second chunk right here. Dropping. Dropping. To the top of the mountain like that. Exactly. To the top of the mountain like that. Right. Your voice fluctuated a little bit for that. A little bit rising again because it's the question. And then dropped it back down to meet the rest of the intonation for the chunk. That. Right. That. And one more time, the word that here, I think I used it for a specific reason. And this reason is to say that whatever Maddie did was awesome. Like that, not like this. Not like that, but like that. I stressed it to emphasize how amazing it was and how confused and shocked and surprised I was when she was able to go to the top of the mountain like that. Mm, good. All right, let's move on to your next line. They'll have to take the ski lift. It allows the skiers and snowboarders to go to the top of the mountain without having to take the gear off their feet. Perfect. And once again, they'll, they'll have to take. So connecting have just a little bit to they'll. Mm -hmm. They'll have. So the connection intensity just wasn't that intense. You could still hear a little bit of the sound. They'll have. Yeah, they'll have. Mm -hmm. So just the connecting was not that intense when I said it the first time. Just wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. To take the ski lift. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, to take the, take the, and okay. then ski lift. 
Of course. Just slowing it down to make sure that it's really clear because this is answering your question because you've always been concerned about it apparently. Right. So ski lift, making this really clear. Mm -hmm. It allows the skiers and snowboarders to get to the top of the mountain. Okay, it allows. The word Connect. allows. I would also say they're connecting though. It allows. All right. Yeah. Correct. It allows. Mm -hmm. Right. The skiers, right here. Skiers and you link it. Skiers and skiers and snowboarders. Right. Skiers and snowboarders. Exactly. Yeah. Skiers and the snowboarders, and then to get to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. To get to the top of the mountain. See, this is something that's different between us. So with this portion of the sentence, start from to. Right. To get to the top of the. Saying it fast at my natural speed. Get to the top of the. Get to the top of the. Mm -hmm. To get to the top of the. Exactly. Yeah. Without having to take the gear off the feet. To gear off the feet. I mean, you stress the word gear for sure. To mm -hmm. take what off? Take the gear off the feet. Mm -hmm. Right, without having to take the gear off their feet. I think I also stressed without having. It's important because you don't want to have to take the boots on and off. Because if we didn't have the ski lift, then we'd have to climb to the top. So this just makes it easier without having to take the gear off your feet. Mm -hmm. So it comes in handy with the ski lift because not only that you don't have to climb all the way up to the mountain like that. But use your gear, and you don't have to take them off. Because it's a pain to get it on and off. <laughs> exactly. So now, if your line is clear, let's move on to mine. Mm -hmm. I see. So aside from snowboarding, what else excites you about winter? I see. So aside from snowboarding, what else excites you about winter? Snowboarding. Really? For okay. Sure. For sure. Snowboarding. What else excites you? Excites you. 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 Excites you, right? Excites you. And then when you link it, you say it fast enough, it's gonna be linked right here. Excites you. About, about, about winner. About winner. Mm -hmm. Right? I also stress the word winner because somehow it indicates the question that I'm trying to ask. What else excites you about winner? Winner. It's still following like the main topic and context of the whole conversation because I said right at the very beginning, oh, I'm so excited for winter. And you kept that in mind, brought it back in. And because we've been talking about right. snowboarding a lot, you're making sure to not include that in the question. So aside from snowboarding, meaning that's not included in the question, is there anything else that I look forward to during winter? Exactly. So a very good point that you that you talked about how I linked it back to what we've been in the topic for. I didn't ask you for any sports that you do in spring or in summer or even fall. But I'm asking you all the sports that you do in winter. Well, it's not just sports, but it's anything else. Anything else. What else excites you? Correct. Mm -hmm. It can be celebrating something. It can be going to different places. Only Things that happen during the season. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to your line, Maddie. Long one. Being able to go sledding, ice skating, watching kids have snowball fights, and even building snowmen. All this just puts you into the spirit of the season. But along with that, with Christmas being in winter, it's just the cherry on top. How about you? Is there anything special you do for winter? Okay, being able to go sledding. I noticed that you have. Rising intonation for this. Sledding. Sledding. Ice skating. Also rising. And then you also raised your intonation for watching, watching kids. And then snowball fights. Snowball fights. The whole phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Watching kids have snowball fights. And then last one, snowmen. And building snowmen. And then now you drop. So I believe all of the reasons that I stressed this is because these are all the activities that I love and look forward to in the winter. And so I'm making it really clear that way there's no miscommunication, mm -hmm. that this long list of things are the things that I'm excited about. But this is a very good way to list things as well. You have all the rising intonation for all of the items and then for the last item you drop it. 
Mm -hmm. That's always the way it is. So, go sledding, up. Ice skating, up. Watching kids have snowball fights, up. And then even building snowmen. So, rising intonation for each new item. Mm -hmm. And then dropping for the last item. For the last item, right. That's how you list. All of this. So, instead of saying all of, how I usually would, I think I said all of. Mm -hmm. You said all of this. Mm -hmm. Stressing this. this and also not shortening it to how I typically would because I'm going back to everything that I just listed and I'm excited about it. So all of this. And we already talked about this before. So when you stress a certain point, the words have to be clear and enunciated. Okay. Just puts you into the spirit of the season. Puts you into the spirit. Very fast here, the way that you said in the conversation video. Mm -hmm. So into the spirit. So you can also say inner, inner the spirit. Into the spirit. Inner the spirit of the season, right? Yeah. I think for season two, I did a dropping intonation. Mm. And it was also slowed down just a little bit. Season, season, making sure it's really clear. Okay. Spirit of the season. Can you read that sentence one more time, Maddie? All this just puts you into the spirit of the season. Okay, inner the spirit of the season. Mm-hmm. Okay, but along with that... <laughs> I think I connected but along. But along with that, right. But it's more important to talk about the, the way that you stress it or you mm -hmm. have that rising intonation right here. So, but along with that... Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason it's stressed here, but along with... So I'm taking everything back from the list that I just made and adding to it. There's more to it. Mm -hmm. So, but along with that... With Christmas being in winter. With Christmas being in winter. So Christmas is stressed because mm. it's the thing. And then winter, winter, is still the season. The thing that we're talking about. The main topic. And the next part that is stressed. It's just the cherry on top. I know for sure I stressed this point in the video. Cherry on top. <laughs> right. She said this one, I mean this phrase specifically with her emotion attached to it. So it's just the cherry on top. Like, it's just an expression and I know that when you said this one, you actually try to convey some message here. So what did you really mean by saying is it the cherry on top, Maddie? So this is a kind of reference that a lot of native speakers will know. And if you ever think about like an uh, ice cream sundae, right? And if there's the cherry on top, that just wraps everything together, right? So all of the ingredients come together perfectly. And so we use this phrase to kind of express how everything is so much better, right? Right. With this last item. Okay. It's just the cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a wordy way to explain it, but pretty clear. Right. How about you? course you raise your intonation right here how about you uh -huh, okay it's a question there was two different ways that you just said that one how about you and how about you right so i have the subtle uh here for the word about because you don't have to say how about you very very clearly like that right mm -hmm. you can also drop the uh here and say how about you how about you or even how about you? How about you? Right? Different people in different circumstances will say this phrase differently. Just depending on how we feel. Exactly. All right, but that's not important. The next one. Is there anything special you do for winter? Mm -hmm. Anything special. Anything special. Right? Mm -hmm. Special. Maddie has a little bit of the rising intonation for the word, I mean for the last syllable of the word special here. Special. special. Is there anything special? Because it is important because this is something very specific right. that you have to be doing a certain activity. You don't do it every season of the year. It's just for winter. So special. Right. Having that a little bit of the rising intonation on the last syllable of the word special to indicate is a question. Anything special, right? Is there anything special? You do for winner. All right. I think everything's clear. Everything is clear. Let's move on to my next line. Not particularly, 
aside from sliding a few times. I don't usually participate in anything, especially related to winter, but I would like to try something new. I think ice skating, dog sledding, snowmobiling, and riding the gondola in winter all sound really good to me. And actually, these activities have been on my bucket list for a long time. Mm -hmm. Not particularly? <laughs> well, okay, before we get started, right. I want to ask them, right. did you clearly hear the things listed and how the intonation happened? I think that's one of the most important points. You made a list and still followed the same rule that we pointed out in the one above. Ah, uh, you're talking about ice skating, dog sledding, and everything mm -hmm. that I listed here? Yeah, so before we get started on like anything else, I wanted right. to ask them if they could clearly hear it. Right, so I said ice skating, dog sledding, snowmobiling, and riding the gondola. Why? Riding mm -hmm. the gondola. 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 You really pressed this and you were really firm with gondola, indicating the end of the list. Right, riding the gondola. Mm -hmm. So everything was really, really clear while you were making the list. So I think highlighting it really quick. Ice skating, dog sledding, snowmobiling, and riding the gondola. Sorry, that was just the first thing that I wanted to kind of talk about because it ties in with the last line. Exactly. No, that's very important to talk about first. But let's go back to the very first one. Mm -hmm. Not particularly. Not particularly. Of course, the word not. I stressed it because this phrase also contains two words, not and particularly. And so not is actually the answer that Maddie is looking forward to mm -hmm. hearing, right? So not particularly. Aside from sledding a few times. And your voice fluctuated for a few times. Mm -hmm. Aside from sledding a few times. This is kind of like showing that you're recalling that you didn't do it too often, but you might be able to count on one hand how often you've been sledding, so yeah. a few times. I don't usually participate in anything. I don't usually, of course, the word don't, I stressed it first, mm -hmm. and then participate in. Exactly. I linked them here, so mm -hmm. participate in anything. Changing that T right there in between participate and in to a D sound, because again, it follows the rule participate in anything exactly participate in mm -hmm. especially especially related to winner okay participate in anything especially related to winner you stressed especially especially mm -hmm. of course like we said about this word before in the last conversation and so especially is actually the word that we use to start or initiate a new idea right mm -hmm. or to let that person know about a new piece of information that's why mm -hmm. Related to winner, specifically. Related to winner. So, Maddie, how do you say it here? Related to winner. Related to winner? Mm -hmm. Okay. But I personally say related to winner because not only is that easier for me to say it that way, but also just because for me, the T sound here is standing not in front of two vowels. I mean, in the middle of two vowels. Mm -hmm. That's why it can be turned into a D sound. But if you use the D sound here at the end, I and mean, for the ED part of the word related, to overpower the T's out here of the word too, then you can also say the way you said. Exactly. And for those of you who are having trouble hearing this or listening to it the way I say it, that's okay. Just keep in mind that when you are confused at something like this, then keep in mind those grammar rules that will really help you in this kind of situation. So. According to the grandma rules, you don't drop t, t, so t has to be in there before winter. Related to winter. Related to winter. Related to winter. Mm -hmm. A very good point. Yeah, so grammar knowledge is very important in some circumstances, mm -hmm. especially when you can't hear some certain sounds or you're not familiar with the way that uh, people are linking it. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the last bit of it. But I think, but I, but I, but I would like to try something new. But I would like to try something new. But I mm. would like to try something new. So the dropping intonation for the rest of it. But I, of course, mm -hmm. up and then would like to try something new. new. To try something new. Even though I had a little bit of a falling intonation for the word new, but I also somehow stressed it by 
Slowing it down. Slowing it down, of course, but dragging it out a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? Something new. You did that same thing with try as well. Try something yeah. new. Right? What kind of thing that I'm about to try? Mm -hmm. Something new. But how much is it gonna take me? I gotta try. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Right? One other thing that I do want to point out is I'm pretty sure we've gone over this in another video. You said something new. Yeah, something. I didn't say something. Mm -hmm. Something. Or a lot of native speakers would say something. Something. I don't hear it all that often unless you're really in a casual situation. Like you're with your buddy and you're talking with them and avoid saying something that way especially to your boss because then that's really indicating that you're taking them lightly right all right so we talked about the word something something and something already so we are going to move on to the next one so i think ice skating i think i skate i think ice skating i didn't link it here for a reason because i started to list everything right here so exactly. that's why i didn't link right ice skating dog sledding snowmobiling and riding the gondola mm -hmm. and we've already gone over the list right. so don't have to go over it necessarily again mm -hmm. in winter all sound all sound all sound of course all sound really good at me good all sound really good at me so all and sound sound is also a very important word within this chunk of the sentence so all sound really good at me and you linked gooda 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 so the t sound here is less important or mm -hmm. less powerful than the d sound here that's why good at me good, good at me. me all sound really good at me and actually and actually of course mm -hmm. rising intonation why because I was about to start a new idea. These activities have been on my bucket list for a long time. And mm. for those of you who don't know what a bucket list is, bucket list is a list that you have all the items of things or activities that you'll do before you pass away. And so it's very important and it will give you some sensational feelings and experience as well. So that's why um, bucket list is a very commonly used phrase. Mm -hmm. Have been on my bucket list. If something that is that special to be on my bucket list, that means it's very important. And that's why actually is the word that I used to start this new idea. Exactly. I want to say really quickly that the other points that you stressed is also activities. Linking it back to the things that you listed, these activities have been on my bucket list. So you're telling me the things that you just listed out are activities on your bucket list right these activities right activities even though i have that folly intonation but mm -hmm. i dragged it out a little bit and enunciating it yeah and the other part is for a long time for a long time for a long time yeah for yeah. A lo how long is it really long for a long time I haven't done it yet, so it's been on your bucket list for a long time. Okay, so I'm just gonna say this phrase, I mean this sentence, one more time. And actually, these activities have been on my bucket list for a long time. Alright, let's move on to your next line, Marty. Alright. Okay, right here. Sounds like quite the bucket list. You can actually cross ice skating off this winter. Calgary has an ice skating rink in the city center. They provide the skates and everything. Alright, sounds like quite the bucket list. Quite. Quite, quite, yeah. Sounds like quite the bucket list. And again, stressing bucket list because I'm referring to what you just said. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mari, I think the word quite here and the word that that we talked about before, like that great, mm -hmm. somehow they have some connection here. I mean, they have some similarity. What do you think? So quite is also an advert and quite the bucket list. That means... Mm -hmm. That is a very interesting bucket list. So I'm saying quite the bucket list here, using quite just to say that I find the things that you just listed pretty interesting to me. Sounds like quite the bucket list. Mm -hmm. You can actually cross ice skating off this winter. Actually cross. Actually cross. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that you can actually do one of the activities that you have on your bucket list. Mm. And so that's what I mean by 
across. Off this winter. I think I said that part a little bit faster. Off this winter. Off this winter. Yeah, you said it fast, but、mm -hmm. it has that rising intonation. All right, so you can actually cross ice skating off this winter, right? Yeah. Calgary has an ice skating rink in the city center. So stressing Calgary because it's the place. Calgary, just、yeah. rising intonation and taking my time to say it, has an ice skating rink. Because that's the place that you can go ice skating. So ice skating rink, rink,、mm -hmm. having that rising intonation for rink. Even if, like I said, I can't remember if I connected and ice. But even、mm -hmm. if it is connected, I'm still stressing ice skating rink. In the city center. I think I also stressed city center. Okay, city center.、Mm -hmm. Okay. Because again, that's the place. They provide the skates and everything. They provide. Of course, the word "provide" is the main verb of the sentence, and that's why you you stressed it.、Mm -hmm. They provide the skates and everything. Skates and. Yeah, I went really fast with this. I said skates and skates and everything. Skates and everything.、Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to my next line. Really, I have no idea where exactly is it in the city center. Really, of course, we talked about this one so many times before. I have no idea. Idea, stressed it, but I dragged it down, and also having that faulty intonation on the word idea. I had no idea. Idea.、Mm -hmm. I think you did that because you're also a little surprised. Because now you know. Right. Where exactly is it? Where exactly is it? Where exactly is it? The intonation that I had upon this phrase is actually fluctuating a lot. Where exactly is it in the city center? Where exactly is it in?、Mm -hmm. In the city center, but I didn't really link it here because、um, I for sure linked it here. So where exactly is it? And then in the city center because I kind of divided into two chunks, right?、Mm -hmm. Where exactly is it? One, and then in the city center, two. All just about personal preference.、Mm -hmm. But how do you personally say it like this? Where exactly is it in the city center? Is、oh, okay. it in the city center? Is it in the city center?、Okay. So I'd still really fluctuate where exactly, and then is it in the city center? Okay. All right. Very short and very straightforward. <laughs> Let's move on to your next line. It's an Olympic park next to Bow Valley College. They convert that swimming fountain thing into an ice rink. Oh, but it isn't just ice skating they do there. They also have curling, hockey, and an inner tubing event. So the very first one, Olympic Park.、Mm -hmm. Stressing Olympic Park because that's the place that you can go ice skating,、mm -hmm. and also stressing next to Bow Valley College. To make it more specific,、mm -hmm. right? Kind of give more information for me to understand where it is. So just in case you didn't know where Olympic Park was, but maybe you know where Bow Valley College is,、mm -hmm. and so that is why it is stressed here. Exactly. So next to. Right here, Bow Valley College. Right. So these are the details. That's why you stressed it.、Mm -hmm. It's in Olympic Park next to Bow Valley College. And I also didn't go extremely fast here either because the details have to be clear because I'm giving directions. Exactly. You didn't want me to re-ask you, right? Mm-hmm. All right. They convert that swimming fountain thing. Stressing, but also taking my time with swimming fountain thing. Because I don't know what it's called. It's、right. a swimming fountain, but then it's also doubling as an ice rink.、Mm -hmm. And then swimming fountain thing into an ice rink. An, an ice. ice rink into an ice rink. So I did connect an ice here, an ice rink. Right. An ice rink into an ice rink.、Mm -hmm. Oh. Just because I'm recalling something. Oh, oh. So it is kind of emotional because, like, just realize that there's another detail. Right. But it isn't just ice skating they do there. But it but isn't. It isn't. You but also, it. it's really important to point out connected. But it. But it isn't.、Mm -hmm. But it isn't.、Mm -hmm. Not only that you stressed intentionally the word isn't, right?、Mm -hmm. But you also linked but it、mm -hmm. and isn't together, as if they're just one word. But it isn't. But it isn't. So even though it's linked. I can still stress it, but it isn't just 
just, just. and then you drop ice skating. They do there. Because mm -hmm. that's now bringing in another point that there's more, of course, than just ice skating. They also have curling, hockey, and an inner tubing event. The way you raise your intonation for all the items, but then drop for the last item. That's how you list. They also have curling, hockey, and an inner tubing event. Exactly. So inner tubing. So typically inner tubing is fluctuated here. Inner tubing and then event because I'm talking specifically about the event that I've seen there right. before. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the way that you linked every sound here. And an inner tubing. Okay, you linked it here. And an inner, and an inner tubing event. All right, and I think that one is clear. Let's move on to my next line. I'm so eager. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that sounds like fun. I should probably swing by and check it out sometime. But do you know if they have a place where they post when a certain event is happening? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that sounds like fun. Of course, the word fun. fun. Sounds like what? Sounds like fun. It shows a little bit of excitement, you know? Mm -hmm. Because if you did say it sounds like fun, then what? Sarcastic. There we I'm go. being sarcastic like, <laughs> oh yeah, regardless of how much you tell me it's going to be exciting. I'm not gonna be, you know, fond of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I should probably swing by and check it out sometimes. Okay. So of course, very very stand out. For this chunk, I actually didn't have a completely dropped intonation. I didn't say I should probably swing by, but I said I should probably swing by. I should probably mm -hmm. swing by. Yeah. So you have that gradual dropping intonation. All right, but then from here to here, I basically dropped my intonation and check it out sometime, mm -hmm. and check it out sometime. All right, so two chunks right there. I should probably swing by and check it out sometime. But do you know if they have a place where they post when a certain event is happening? But do you know? Of course. Mm -hmm. Do you know? It's a question. I raised it to indicate it's a question. Do you know? If they have a place, kind of dropping a little bit. But then you're also really taking your time for each and every single word because you're curious, and so you have to make sure that the question's clear to me. Right. Where they post, where they post. Okay. Have a place. You link. Have a, have a place where they post when a, when a, when a, yeah. When a certain event, certain. Don't say certain because it's going to be more work. When a certain event is happening. If you follow all the rules that we talked about for the word mountain, winner, or even interview, then you can say in event. You leave out the T's out here and you say if event is event is happening. You don't even have to say event is right. Mm -hmm. When a certain event is happening, of course, the word happening has to be raised. Why? Because it's a question. I think everything's clear. All right, let's move on to your next line. Yeah, you can find everything you need on the city's website. I think there's also a Facebook group that posts current events for the city as well. But I'll have to double check. I'll keep you updated when I find it. Wow, you read it so fast. <laughs> yeah, you can find everything. Find everything. Find everything. Yeah, you can find everything you need on the city's website. You can find everything you need. So everything I fluctuated it here because I'm encompassing all of your questions, all of the events. Everything you need. Yeah. So, what can I find on the website? Everything. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, you can find on the website. Okay. You need on. Need on. Yeah, connecting it. Need on. Right. You can find everything. And also use. Did you link it here? I think so. Find everything. Because mm -hmm. I said this sentence really fast. You can find everything. You need on. Right. Find everything you need on. Mm -hmm. The city's website. So this is the possessive form, the city's website. Why? Because the website belongs to the city, so we have to say cities. So be careful and do not miss the s. Cities, cities website. Mm -hmm, perfect. I also think that there is a Facebook group. I also think. I also think because I'm adding more information. There's not just the city website, but there's more places. That you can find information about what's happening within the city. 
But I also think there's a, there's a, that's connected. And then the way I stressed, Facebook group. Facebook group. I took my time with this. Facebook group. Group. Mm -hmm. So I'm really firm with group. Why? Because it's a new piece of information, right? Mm -hmm. A Facebook group. And it also has to be really clear. That way you also know and there's no miscommunication about where you can find this information. Okay. And since we're here and the next word is going to be posts and I know that a lot of people uh, that are watching this video will probably have some hard time pronouncing the word posts. There's two S sounds and you cannot skip either. Our ears are sensitive. We'll pick it up. And moving on to the next thing, current events for the city. Current events for the city. So dropping intonation, mm -hmm. dropping intonation. Current events for the city as well. Moving on. So rising for but out and then dropping back down just a little bit for half to half to. Double check. Taking your time to really say double check. Yeah. Half to double check. This has to be clear because it's showing that I am unsure of this last piece of information. Mm -hmm. So I have to take a second look at it and see if I can find it. I'll keep you updated when I find it. Exactly, because I'm telling you and I'm communicating with you that first I'm going to look. Mm. Once I do see the Facebook group is there, then I'm going to tell you about it and maybe send you a link. Very good. The next line. Perfect, Maddie. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I have a meeting to prepare for right now. So I'm so sorry to cut the conversation short like this. Perfect, Maddie. Of course. The word perfect. Stress. Why? Because I wanted to let her know that every piece of information that she just gave me was awesome. Perfect. Perfect, Maddie. Thank you so much. Once again, I stress the word so much. How much? So much. So much. <laughs> Unfortunately, and then drop because this is this is where it's getting a little tricky because I am trying to make an excuse to end the conversation and that's why unfortunately, right? It's not only that, but then it's also something bad that's happening. Bad. Because the conversation's ending abruptly. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, but it's also conveying that you feel a little sense of guilt because one, you've lost track of time and you have to go prepare mm. suddenly. And so it's also conveying, again, sense of guilt, taking right. a little bit of responsibility. Right. Yeah, for the things that I have for myself, but also for the feeling that you are having as well, because we are having a very fun conversation. And all of a sudden, I'm saying something that I got to go yeah. to prepare for. Right. So I have a meeting to prepare for right now. I have a meeting, of course, the meeting, mm -hmm. because why? is a new piece of, of information, right? And so, have a what? Have a meeting to prepare for right now. And also the word right now, not later, but right now, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to cut the conversation short like this. I'm so sorry to cut the conversation short like this. So, basically the intonation that I have upon this phrase, I mean the sentence, is dropping. It is all falling, right? That's because you're a little remorseful. Mm. Correct. All right, so it's very straightforward because it's not a long line. So let's move on to your next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. I'll see you later. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Mm -hmm. Like expressing that he has nothing to feel guilty about. So yeah, no worries. It's okay. Yeah. Don't, don't feel bad. Very friendly because the way that I perceived the sentence when you said it, I was like, wow, I was relieved because I thought it was going to be rude if I cut the conversation short like this by saying I had a meeting to go to prepare for. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you showed me that, no, it wasn't a big deal. Exactly. And also keeping the relationship overall friendly, even if something does abruptly come up, showing that you're understanding. Mm, very good. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Yeah. And then see ya. And that is it for Conversation 8's pronunciation teaching video. I hope you guys find it helpful in your own learning journey. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our next video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.